90% of all mixing problems can be solved with a better take. That's right. That's the advice. In today's crazy old world, we are expected to not only play our instruments at a professional level, we are also expected to record and mix our music at a professional level. This is bullshit. Each one of these skills can and often does take a lifetime to master. I've been playing the guitar since 1978 and I am barely, barely as good as I want to be. So on top of that, I have to now be able to record and mix my music. Yeah. So let's open up this claim that I make and see what we can find and see if we can find any more truth within it. Or let me explain what it is that I mean by it. If you ask 10 people how to record music, you will get 10 different answers and each one of them could be technically correct. These are art forms, not sciences. There isn't a magic formula to make these work each and every time, one time. If you go to YouTube and watch some videos of famous mixing people and watch them mix a song, they'll tell you this is the way to mix a song and then they'll go ahead and mix it their way. And another artist will mix it another way and tell you that this is the way to mix a song. I'm reading my notes off of here, off of there, off of here. I hope this looks good. Here are the principles under which I am working for this philosophy, for this opinion. Less is more. The less you have to do to a mix, the better. And secondly, if something can be removed, it probably should be. It just doesn't need to be there. We all want our songs to have this final polished, finished and ready kind of uh, vibe about them and I think anyone who's ever finished a song will tell you the songs are never really finished they're just released so let's go into an example of what I'm talking about swishy 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 swish, transition to example I'm gonna take some coffee I hope this looks great I hope this lights making me look fantastic Put it in the comments. The light makes you look fantastic. And extra bald. Look at that. I should put solar panels up there. All right. So let's say you record a bass or a guitar part and you listen back to it and it's a little bit woofy in the bottom end. Not so defined. Now, you could break out a high pass filter and start rolling off that bottom end to control it a little. And that would be a legitimate way to go about it. You could do that. Uh, but the thing is, especially in my particular case is, well, where do you put this high pass filter? What's the slope? What's the this? What's the that? You know, save me, oh gods of mixing of YouTube. Tell me that one answer that makes everything correct. Or you could then go back to the guitar tone or the bass tone as it was, dial a little bit of the bottom end out and do another take. Yay. No need to mix that part anymore. Yeah, but then you've got to keep doing take after take and the song takes forever to record and it can be really frustrating. Good, good, and let me tell you why. Every time you do another take, you are practicing your instrument. There is no such thing as wasted time when you're playing a musical instrument, in my opinion. So the more takes you do, the better you're going to be at playing them. And if you're tweaking your tone regularly in order to make it fit the mix better, you are doing two things at once. You are getting better at your instrument and you are also getting better at using your equipment. You're starting to know where the numbers are, where to put certain filters. And it's just by trial and error. It can add time to making your music and that's a a valid thing. I know I certainly feel that when I start to record a song I often get this desire, I call it freight train mentality where 
you're constantly focused on the destination and that's the only thing that's in your mind and you tend to lose focus on the process while you're uh, while well, you're obsessing about the destination. This is a, uh, a problem I personally have had for a long time and I'm assuming other people might have it too. Um, so there's a third advantage to that is that if you can get into the habit of tweak the tone, do another take, you will be playing more often, using your gear better and hopefully enjoying the process more which I think is an extremely important thing. I think it's important to enjoy the process of creating our art. So, more coffee. <sighs> That's much better. Are your vocals maybe not sitting on top of or popping out of the mix as you like? Are you having trouble with the dynamics? Why not? split your vocal take into two. Perhaps the, in this example, the verse, is, verse has slightly softer dynamics and the chorus, say, has uh, harder dynamics, louder dynamics. Soft verse, loud chorus. Pixies for the win. You could record them separately. Set the gain so it's at a comfortable level, so your soft singing hits a level where you like and sing the soft parts. Then change the game, turn it down a little so you can yell like a motherfucker into the microphone and without clipping and now record the choruses. 90% of all mixing problems can be solved with a better take. There's this impression that these people, especially the people who do the mixing and the mastering, are kind of wizards and they're just, yeah, you know, pull a bit of 2.5k out of this and put a little blah 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 and oh fuck Jesus Christ. I want to assure you that any song you've listened to or any album you've listened to that you love and you've sat there and thought about, hmm, I wonder what the mixing process was. Let me tell you now, they used absolutely everything at their disposal to make that recording sound as good as it possibly could have. If the guitar solo wasn't quite going in one take, then they recorded it in six takes and they put it together. They, they just do whatever it takes. There's no such thing as cheating. Cheating does not exist in this. It's art. You can't cheat at art. You do your art, you apply your processes, and your art either appeals to people or it doesn't. This thought that Mixes have to be pure and done in one take and all live. Fine, you do your art the way you like, but be assured that the people you respect who have done this and the, 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 the recordings that you admire have been cheated on. Every engineer and every person that could used every trick in the book as much as they could to make that recording sound as good as it possibly could have. There is no such thing as cheating. Allow yourself to, no, I'm not even gonna say allow yourself to cheat. Good art, most good art, is an iterative process. You might have seen that uh, some of the most famous paintings in history started off as a sketch on the canvas. Artists frequently sketch out the image first and then they add. They'll do the basic outline, then maybe some shading and then maybe some other art thing that art people know how to do. All art can be the same. So your music can be the same. You can iterate it. Do a pass of this one thing, then do a pass of the other, and then do a pass of the other. Build it up and use all the tricks at your disposal because the one thing above all in my opinion is that I hope that didn't tapping tapping I hope that tapping the microphone didn't do a thing you should be having fun when you do this that's what's most important all right I'm going to say it one last time 90% of all mixed problems can be solved with a better take so go out there and get the best possible takes and the song will essentially mix itself. Remember to have fun out there, and thanks for watching. See ya.